Have you ever thought about going out on your own, starting your own business? And have you worried about, oh my goodness, what about COVID? How could I keep it going? Well, today, Karen and Simmer are going to give you the behind the scenes of how to keep it all together, keep it running, and use a little bit of your passion to help it forward. You're listening to the Dynamic Women Podcast. Each week, you'll be inspired by our global community of women. They'll share with you tools and stories to help you be dynamic in every area of life. He's your host, award-winning coach, and the CEO and founder of Dynamic Women, Diane Ralston. Hello, lovely Dynamic Women. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this episode of the Dynamic Women Podcast. I'm Diane Rolston, your host, and I have two fabulous women here. Now, I know them to be passionate, caring, smart, business women and moms and so many other things. But today we're going to go behind the scenes. We're going to pull back the curtain a little bit on their life, their business, and how they have been working through this thing called a pandemic. So please welcome Simmer Grewal and Karen Cobell. I'm going to give you guys a clap. I don't normally clap, but I'm going to give you a clap. Hello and welcome. Can you just like give us a quick couple sentences here? Tell us about yourself. So Simmer, who are you? What do you do? So as you know, my name is Simmer Grewal. I live in Surrey with my husband and my two beautiful children and a standard poodle that we just got in April when the pandemic started. (laughs) <laughs> but um, apart from that, I coach kids uh, about coding and how they, it can improve their lives and get them ready for the future. And kids ages eight and up. And my passion is to educate girls in coding because there are not many girls in the coding world or in the IT world. Yeah, very true. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to unpack that a little bit more too. Mm-hmm. Karen Cobell. Hello. Hi. Um, so I'm the owner of Kalina Movement Studio in North Vancouver. Uh, our main modalities of movement are Pilates, yoga, and dance. Uh, mixed in there is some personal training. Um, what else? We do classes. Lots of kids, mom and baby, prenatal, postnatal. I have a husband. I have a five-year-old daughter. We have an American bully who's four. I feel like I need a dog now. <laughs> wow. We've, we've had the dog before the pandemic. <laughs> well, I got a cat and she's been around here for a while. Well, thank you ladies for being here today, for coming in to talk to the Dynamic Women community. I really appreciate it. And I know that, hey, listeners, you're going to get a lot out of this. We, I got some good questions for these ladies. So uh, let's jump right in. So you both run your own school, your own studio like it's your own place and there are a lot of people who go into teaching or go into working for someone or teach at a at a studio or a gym so what made you both decide you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna go on my own i'm gonna do this myself simmer why don't you start us off for me to to go on my own was like pretty much a push uh from my husband Um, Because I've been working for like 13, 14 years. And the last job I did, um, it was not very fulfilling for me. And I wasn't able to spend a lot of time with the kids at home because I would get back from work at about 7 p.m. and they're already in bed. So a lot of factors came into being when, you know, you should go start something on your own. You have the education, you have this passion, but what are you doing with it? So it was his main push. He's like, just quit your job and do it. And here's where I am. And can I ask what your job was before? So I was a scrum master slash business analyst for a venture capital firm in downtown Vancouver. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Drop the mic there. Wow, that's pretty intense. Okay, cool. <laughs> and so I love that you have a supportive husband who who not only is like, go do it, um, but all the belief that he has in you. That's so awesome. Now, is he an entrepreneur himself? He is an entrepreneur himself. That is uh, correct. Yeah. And so but he, he wasn't at the time when he encouraged me to become an entrepreneur. Oh, so then you encouraged him maybe to, to oh, okay. Because I was thinking, 
you know, oftentimes parents who are entrepreneurs will encourage their kids to be entrepreneurs. And then, so now I was thinking maybe your spouse was an entrepreneur helping, you know, get you going because he wanted to have lunch, lunches or exercise, go for walks together during the day together, but no. Okay, cool. That's, that's interesting. Okay. And uh, Karen, how about you? What had you be like, yeah, I'm going to ha- own the keys to my own studio. Well, from a very young age, I wanted my own studio. It started out just as a dance studio because I've danced my entire life. Um, And I grew up in a very safe and stable environment with parents who had those jobs. They were not entrepreneurs. Um, So there was always the background chat of what's your safe and secure option? What's your safe and secure option? I was like, yeah. What? what? What are you talking about? I was like, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Um, and I've done tons of teaching for other pl- places, other people, right? And I've done work at other things that had nothing to do with teaching Pilates, dance, or yoga. I was a server forever. Yeah. Um, bartender, all those things, because I just like always worked and hustled, right? But to bring it in and make it my brand and my like this, uh, like it's a massive jump, but like in my heart of hearts, this is what it was meant. Like, this is what I was meant to do. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you know, and it like, no, it's like my husband was very supportive, but he's, he was working at the time. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, we did it. <laughs> we did it. You took the leap. And, yeah. And yeah. And that, this and the tiny bit of background, the studio that is my studio uh, was the studio that I've worked at since like the day I moved here. And yeah. So like this has been my home for like 15 plus years. So by, it really. By the business or you, or you just took it over with a new name? Um, there were some things I bought from the previous studio owner, right? Like her yeah. database, yeah. um, equipment and those things, and then rebranding and renaming, mm. and shifting the energy and transitioning people to trust me. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So you were kind of already one foot in, but then you had to take full ownership. And so some of the stuff was done, which was easy except now you've got all these people that yeah you need to bring onto your your train your path now simmer you you came into a business as well right so share a little bit more of that because you also i guess got a little bit of guidance in how things would go yes and uh, so level up is a franchise mm-hmm. and i was the first one to buy the franchise in bc so it was like um, testing the waters kind of thing when we started up our location in Cloverdale and then it grew, but it grew because I had the guidance from the franchise or I had my business degree coming into play. I had my financial background coming into play, I had my IT coming into play. So it was like a mix of everything, but yeah. that's, that's how we got it to where it is now. So now I have like three locations. Mm. So here are two options. Are you catching this ladies who are listening here? We got two options here. You know, you work for someone else, you see how they do it. And maybe one day you decide to, to become a co-owner with them, or they decide to move on for whatever reason, and you get to take it over or a franchise. So, and me, I'm, I'm a little bit different than both of you, where it was like, it wasn't a case of, I want to buy a business and have a space. It was more so I want to be a coach and a speaker and a trainer. And, and there's just, if I'm going to do that, there's not really a place to go and get a job to do that. And so it was just go on my own. And so there are different ways to go on your own. And so don't just think, oh, well, it's got to be this way or it's got to be that way. And if you're worried about, I just don't know enough about business. I don't know enough about the systems and processes, then the franchise route could be the best option for you with everything kind of done, or you already have a foot in the door like Karen does, you can, or did, you can step into that, maybe that management role or take it over or see it like an apprenticeship and then go off and do your own thing. 
obviously not right down the street from the person you learn from, <laughs> but, but at least, yeah, a little bit of space, a little bit of respect for uh, non-compete there. So how did you feel the day that maybe Karen, the day you signed the papers to say you would take it and uh, simmer the day that you're like, yep, I'll take a franchise. Or was it like maybe the day that you opened the door that you asked you like, today I have the keys and I'm opening the door and it's, it's me, I'm doing it. So just what was the feeling at one of those momentous moments? Let's go with Karen first. Here. I think it was, it was surreal for sure. And for me, I don't think it set in until I actually popped up my tent out on the street corner with a sign that said my like studio name on it. Oh uh, yeah. Has there were like a few hiccups right at the beginning of taking over. <laughs> yep. like some construction hadn't been done properly. So they had to like redo a whole wall. Um, yeah. So not until like maybe two months later, did I get that like. <laughs> and and what is that? What's that feeling? Cause I can see you right now and that you're shaking your arms and throwing them up. But, but what is, what was the feeling? <laughs> if you could give a word to describe how you felt. So excited. So excited. And bef did, did you have fear? Did you have anxiety? Did you have worry of the like, when, when she said to you, do you want to take this over? And you were like, oh, and then you were like, yes, I'm doing it. And then exchanged the money to be able to do it. What was the feeling there? I think the feeling for me was like, why would I not? Uh, it was just so right for you why would I not? Because especially with the previous studio owner, like her and I had been together working. I like, I watched, I learned like all these things, right? Yeah. Like it was just the best step. It so, made yeah. sense. I was like, awesome. Just show me how to do this one thing. And I think we're good. Right. Are we good? Great. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so good. So, um, Simmer, how about you? What was the moment that you were like, Whoa, it's really happening. And maybe just like Karen, like what was the moment where you're like, whoop, this happening, uh-oh, or, or those feelings, and then going into the like, oh, I'm doing it, this is awesome. What was your journey? So for me, the moment it was when the money went out from my bank account to the franchise store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's when I'm like, okay, I've put all this in, it's happening, now what? And then we started, you know, promoting it, getting it to a level. And then once we did our open house, the first registration came through and I'm like, yes, I got it. Like I can do this. It was like that sense of um, gratification, I would say. And also a sense of accomplishment at the same time uh, that, you know what? I got my first enrollment. There's no looking back. Mm. And then it was just on and on and on. Yeah. And I'm going to, this, what came to mind, and I always trust these flashes of images that I get. This one is, was when I jumped out of a plane with someone strapped to my back. Cause I was not learning to be an expert at that. And you're falling, right. And you're not really realizing it. And then you're like, I think I'm supposed to have a parachute at this time. So I feel like starting a business is like that. Like you jump out and it's exciting, but then you're like, Oh, I'm really like, I, I could, this could go really wrong. And then all of a sudden the parachute, whoop, pulls you up and then you're like, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm, and I'm going to look and I'm going to enjoy the experience. And then I'm just going to make sure I land somewhat decent on the ground. So you, you had that moment of, uh Oh, when the money leaves. Yeah. But it was a great investment and, and you're shaking your head. Yes. How did you know before all that money came in from registrations or at least before people started saying, yes, we want this. How did you know it was the right decision for you? I guess it was just the belief I had. I was, I was solving a problem. And what was the problem that you felt you were the, solving? <clears throat> the problem I felt that I was solving was that a lot of kids are just playing the games and their minds are being, you know, taken from to a totally different level when they're actually playing it. And I come in with a perspective of why don't you make your own game? what you want to envision, but using programming so that you can use it later in life if, when you want to go find a job or maybe open up a new business or, you yeah. know, just give those skills, that mm -hmm. confidence boosting of kids. It's just amazing. And that's the belief I had when I 
jumped into this when I found this franchise and I'm like, I want it because, you know, it solved a problem. Yeah. And it's in a, and it's in an area that you're very passionate about, I'm hearing. And so I'm going to go into that, um, into the passion piece in a moment. Um, but you also mentioned confidence. And what's really cool is I look back even on some of the things that I did. I did junior achievement where they help you to like build a business in high school. I did um, sports, so many sports and so many different things that while I'm not a professional soccer player, it built my confidence. And, and years ago, I was not a business owner, but what I did in that in junior achievement really helped me to build me. And so this idea that, that really both of you are helping to instill confidence in people or to help them to just gain confidence in themselves through what you're doing. So mm -hmm. let's, let's touch on the, the passion piece for you, Karen. How did you know this was the right, I know you said like it was a no brainer. It was the next step for me, but how do you, how did you know this was like really what you should do? Um, for the timing, I think for so many things in life is never perfect, mm. right? Like I had, Marcella was only 13 months old. When you took over the business and then rebranded. Or like when the process started, right? Yeah. But, yeah. And it was, it was like, uh, sorry, you're going to take over a brand new business with an almost two year old? Hmm. Huh. Okay. And was but, that a lot of people saying that to you? I no, I think that mostly was the tiny little voice back here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. But then like this and this were like, yes. Yes. The heart was like, no, this is where I need to be. You know, I had a I panel at the we had before we had live events for dynamic women and we would do panels. And one of the women on it, we, I asked something around, how did you know you were supposed to do and she do this? And she said, you know, Diane, it feels like this was imprinted on my soul. Mm -hmm. and I like, I don't know if she got that from somewhere, but man, did that just like, I, I almost like burst out crying hearing that. Cause I was like, yes, yes, that is how I feel. And that's how I know both of you feel about the work that you're doing. And not everyone who goes out on their own to do their own business has that kind of passion and that feeling of, I have to do this because it's imprinted on my soul. Some people do it because they're like, this is a really good moneymaker. And so I'm going to do this because I love business and I love entrepreneurship and I love investing. So let's, let's look at the kind of the pros and cons of going on your own. Like, why would you say someone might be sitting there right now who's listening? And I know you, you got this idea. I, I kind of can hear you over the mic here. <laughs> so they might be sitting there going, I maybe want to do this. I maybe want to, like, I've always thought of having my own sewing shop or I've thought about um, being a tax accountant, but not working for this company anymore. What would your, what are the pros and cons or what would your advice be for someone who's thinking about this? <laughs> First and the foremost, I would say, you, yeah, people have a passion, but then also combine it with the wisdom, mm. be it the wisdom you've worked over the years at a job or, you know, reading about it, knowing everything that needs to be done around a business. Like, okay, what is, um, for me as an entrepreneur, even I'm passionate about this, I always have an exit strategy. Mm, good tip. Always have an exit strategy. And then if you're passionate about it, make sure you've got the wisdom to back it up. Yeah, exactly. Because that will speak when you're, when you're selling, when you're marketing your business, yeah. your passion, your wisdom will speak through it. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, I was coaching a client the other day and, and um, there was just something going on with her and, and her business. And what we realized was she had made an emotional decision, not a business decision. And so often people want things to work out or they, they choose to do a certain thing because they're trying to be kind to people or because they were hurt, they make a certain decision. And 
it's so important that when you're going to open your own business, you run the numbers and you make sure that this is going to work, not just for your lifestyle in the way of like, I, Oh, okay. I'm going to cool. I'm going to be here certain hours, but it also works for you financially in your life. So Karen, what are, what are your, what's your advice to someone thinking about this? What are the pros and cons? Take take any of that that you want to take and share. Ooh. Pros and cons. Uh, you are making your own schedule. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, like a that. That's a huge one, right? You're putting your time and your energy into something, A, that you want to be doing, B, that like has meaning to you. So at the end of the day, you're not going home being like, Oh my gosh, do you know what that, you know, those things that happen <laughs> at work that you don't like that happen at yeah. work and then you come home and then you just make up like, yep. you know, like I get to go home uh, and feel light and feel lifted because like for me and my work, obviously I'm helping people emotionally, mentally and physically. Right. So, I mean, for like, I'm going to say 100% of the time, people are walking out of here with a smile. So that means I get to go home with a smile. Mm. And then everybody at home sees Karen come home, like excited to come home. Be like, ah, the day. Yes. yes, to the day again. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> listeners, did you catch that? You get to create your schedule, but you also get to choose who you not only work alongside, so you know, Karen gets to choose who runs her classes. She gets to choose who she brings into her space and she gets to choose her clients as well. And it's the same with you, Simmer. You get to do that too. Um, But it's also the feeling at the end of the day when you've been doing your passion all day. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I I totally get that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, some cons. What are the cons of running your own business? Well, there's always a little uncertainty. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. You know. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. The risks. The risks. The risks risks involved. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to be a business owner or an entrepreneur, you have to be a a risk taker. Because it's all about that. Like you have the belief, you have the passion, but there's also the risk. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's funny because then listeners bear with me. You're going to hear about this for probably the next 12 months, but my father like passed away in August and there was no one giving me five days bereavement pay. There was no one that uh, like, I couldn't just show up at work and kind of half be there and still get a paycheck at the end of the day. Uh, that wasn't going to happen. I didn't have team. Like I have, I have, people on my team, but I mean, I didn't have colleagues that I could just say, could you take that on for me instead? That, that didn't happen. It's me and only me. And so the one con is that you got to show up. You got to show up and you only make money if you're putting the work in and the time in. And so just for all the listeners out there, if you haven't read the E-Myth and you're, th- and you, and you, thinking about going on your own because you, you're amazing at what you do, whatever that is, please read the e-myth to find out because I have so many people coming to me saying, I don't know why I'm not making money. I'm such a good fill in the blank at what they're good at as the technician, but they're a terrible manager and they're a terrible entrepreneur. And so they're not being able to run a business properly. And so read the e-myth, save yourself some grief. I could, I could promote one of my books, but that just lays it all out as <laughs> starting your own, uh, starting your own business. So, okay. Risk. Yeah. Let's go there. Yeah. Risk and things completely out of our freaking control, <laughs> right? COVID, 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 COVID. <laughs> I'm going to ask you in a moment, how did it affect your business? Um, the most immediate thing for me was I had a whole week planned in Ontario. Um, I know that Simmer and Karen, you, you mentioned cities you're in BC, uh, I was in the other, on the other side of the country in Ontario, and I was just about to lead five different events over the course of a week to clients, to leads, to potential clients. Uh, I had a lot of um, potential revenue coming in, and I had a lot of revenue that was going to be coming in every month following that. So that wiped out, I'd say, half of my revenue for the year. 
So how did it affect my business? Well, in the, like that first week that there was shut down, it, yeah, it screwed me over. Plus I'd flown to Ontario. <laughs> so how did it maybe immediately affect your business? And now that we're like a year in, basically, um, how is it still affecting your business? Start some for, yeah. <laughs> for me, um, it was shutting down the doors for all the locations. Number one, that's like, you can't have anybody in. Because nobody knew what this all was, what was going to happen. And, and you had three um, rental, sp- rental spaces? Yes. And I, had, and I gave up one because I was on a month-to-month lease for one of, the, one of them, which was great because I could give it up. But the other two, you have to pay rent. There was no rent subsidy. There was nothing coming through. That is the risk that I was talking about. But that's how it affected my business. Nobody's coming in. The students who had bought their camps and classes and everything, Everything stopped. Parents were asking for refunds. Um, there were only some parents who wanted, like, they were okay with credits, but some of them, they had to move cities. So, for example, I had a student, his family, actually, it was a brother and a sister. Their family moved from BC to Ontario. So they can't have classes here. I, you know, I have to find. And that's an, two clients now gone. Two clients. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so immediate was that shutting down and, um, and you shared about one decision you could make quickly, which was get rid of one location. And so mm-hmm. that was smart. And we're gonna, I'm going to come back to you. We're going to talk about what are some other decisions, either quick ones that you made that were like, that's a no-brainer. I just get rid of that location or other decisions that were really hard to make and the decisions that you made that have really helped you to last this long through it, right? Mm-hmm. Karen, mm-hmm. I know that it, you're in a live studio and people are running around or dancing yes. around. <laughs> so, yes. so you also had to shut your doors? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm, they, the shutdown happened just after, like, the energy shifted, if that makes sense. So I showed up here to teach a class that normally has a good 13 ladies in it. Yeah. But basically a full class here in, in a small boutique studio. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I'm showing up because at the time you as a client could also just show up at my door, sign in, say, oh, I didn't get a chance to sign in online. So I'm here. Right. Yeah. And, and so I usually have a good handful of those ladies every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9:30 AM. I showed up. I ended up being here all by myself. Wow. Not one of my regulars were here. So it like, I didn't even get to make the decision. The C word made the decision for me because everybody went to wherever you go when those uncertainties hit you and you're scared and you're not sure. And like, and so I literally set my computer up. I created a Facebook group within like five minutes. I was like, oh, Kalina moves online. Here we go. And I just did like a Facebook live. Yes. Because that was then the turning point of where this business was going for who knew how long. Yeah. Yeah. And And I was at a very crucial point too in negotiations with my landlord. I was getting ready to sign a five year lease. That's where we were. We were like, it's going. Yeah. We're paying for it to, sorry, what? (laughs) Yeah. You, you run a movement studio that's in person. Now you can't be in person. So figure that out. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's funny because I can remember sitting there on the Sunday night, right before I was going into a two day mastermind with my clients, my elite coaching members and sitting there and checking in with them. How do you feel? And some one person was like, I have an existing health condition. Like I, I can't get it. And someone else, I, I'm in close contact with my aging mother. And, and so the other ones were like, I'm in, I'm in, let's do it. I'm in, I'm coming. And then one of them was like, oh, now I don't have childcare. So I can't be in, even though I'm really, and then I was like, hey, I can get a bigger room. I can social distance. It's before all those really, those terminologies were in play. And I thought, you know what, as the organizer, and you guys probably felt this too. I feel like I have a social responsibility to not make this happen. And plus at the time my father was alive but he had cancer. So I was also thinking, am I not going to be able to see him if I go ahead with these? 
but that social responsibility. Sometimes we got to put on a big girl panties and make a decision, not for ourselves, but for the people we serve. So what were some of the, the other quick decisions that you made or painful decisions or profitable decisions? Simmer? Uh, like Karen said, she jumped on a Facebook Live. For me, it was paying for Zoom instead of the free one and just holding classes online because we were right into spring break. We couldn't hold spring break camps and right after spring break was after school programs. So all the after school programs were held online. And it's just the way that, you know, you have, like you say, you have a connection. So I have a good connection with the parents and just sent them out an email that, hey, this is the world we are in and this is what we're offering right now. Yeah. So everyone like, yeah, let's, let's do it. It's fine. Let's do it. And people are signing up for two hours of class instead of one hour, which was great mm -hmm. because kids didn't have anything else to do. So that was, that was one of the decisions. And even ongoing right now, we have in-person because we are a learning center. We're not like a dance class or anything. Yeah. No dance, but for kids, like dance classes are canceled. They can't hold them. For us, we are a learning center because they're just sitting in one spot and they're working on the computers. So we can remain open. Hmm. But we're also having online classes. And that, that must be hard for you, Karen, to know, like, there's such different rules for different businesses. It's mm -hmm. so annoying. I know. It's <laughs> so annoying. I know. I know. It's yeah. um, like we have students coming in and they're like, oh, my dance class got canceled. You know, you have empathy and you, and you really feel bad because there are some kids who are really passionate about dance and, you know, um, like hip hop classes and stuff. But there's only so much I can do from my business perspective, yeah. you know, it's for the betterment of everybody. Like when the two weeks shut down, the first two weeks shutdown came recently, we closed our doors. We're like, I don't want anybody to, cause the rules weren't clear at that time. So yeah. I, I shut, I shut my doors for both my yeah. locations, both my existing locations, but yeah. we had online classes still going on. Yeah. And so Karen, how did your online classes go and how are you still able to have people like me showing up at your studio in order to do work with you? Well, we are, I mean, you know, we've just shifted to more of the one-on-one, the -on -one, right? One-on-one, yep. -on -one, uh, super socially distanced. <laughs> like, yes. I mean, I sit on the opposite side of the room and I don't move and I tell you what to do. <laughs> And it's, and it's pers like, it's an individual workout. Yeah. So I mean, what and that's, what, that's what I can do right now, right? To keep things fluid and moving forward. Um, and we are actually have gotten, um, the green, we've gotten the green light for kids dance classes, uh, but technically not kids yoga. So we have dance class. Which we That's are because dance you move around and yoga you're basically in one spot. And it, that's right. So these are the inconsistencies that us as movement business owners are dealing with right now. Um, and it's just confusing because I do see other businesses that are open that have like way more people in a room than I do because I've over socially distanced people where I'm only taking six. Or I was, I was only taking six people in a yoga class. That's it. Every window is open. <laughs> Masks are on people as they're lying in Shavasana, but they were, they're willing to do it because they know they need it. Yeah. Right. And, and like, these are the things that are happening in society right now too. It's like, yeah. where is our mental health? Where is our physical health? Because though, if those things are in check, our immune system is stronger. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. And so dynamic women out there, you can hear that no matter what happens in business, really, there are gonna be differences in industries. There is gonna be a difference in cities where Simmer said her, her clients are coming in, her students are coming in saying, hey, our dance class is canceled. And Karen's like, I'm over here in this city and I can have dance classes and maybe couldn't last week, but can this week. And so there are changes. And even though you run your own business, there are still people and 
governments that will change. I'm not saying government's bad, but they'll change and direct how you do things. And so always the biggest thing is make sure you comply. I've heard from you, Karen, you know, in, in being at the studio and I've seen the changes that need to be made in order to continue to comply. I'm sure Simmer, you've also had to learn in order to comply. There should be yes. like a, 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 an expert you can bring in around compliance around COVID. I'm sure there's like a, like someone who knows it all, like, like someone who does taxes. They just, they, they read everything and they know everything and probably the same thing for COVID. So let's yeah. kind of bring it all together with this, the final, final question around how do you stay persistent? Cause it's one thing to be like, Oh, that, you know, as a, maybe an artist, that, that show I usually am in or that, uh, that vendor show is not happening this year. That's going to kill my profits here. Or the software I normally use isn't being, you know, it's not working anymore. Or I just had a really bad Christmas season, mm. but this has been all, this has basically been a year. So how do you stay persistent when things have been out of your control, when it's, forced you to change how you do things how do you how do you keep going I don't know who wants to tackle that one I'll jump in <laughs> yeah, Karen, go go ahead. Uh, it'll, I'm in it's it's trusting again this and this your heart and your soul yeah it's trust right like I I trust um and I have my own bag but I ha also have really found out who are like who also has my back in my community right like it's been that's been my persistence right is like there are people and they show up and they're like yes you got this like no like we, you we're here we're not going anywhere you know like just even sometimes the messages that I get on a text from a client or like someone I haven't seen in a while and they see what I'm doing on yeah. Facebook or Instagram. They're like, yes, thank you. Thank you. So I just in kind of a summary of what you're saying here. So the listeners can really grab the wisdom that you're sharing is, is stay in alignment with what your heart and soul desires. And when you are in alignment with that, that movement, that mission that you have in the world, in the universe, mm -hmm. and, you're, and it's to the service of your people, um, then you're, you're in a good place. And if you have to change and adjust how you do things, your people will come along, but only if you've been serving your people well. And that's what I'm hearing from you, Karen, is that your people have adjusted and they've gone into smaller class sizes or into one-on-ones. They're wearing masks. They're being dedicated to you because you formed that relationship with them. That's awesome. Yeah. And as one of, and as one of your clients, <laughs> I definitely feel that. Yeah. Your care and concern for everyone and you working so hard to, to be able to get people back into the studio as quick as possible. So Simmer, how about you? How do you stay persistent in, in this crazy time and in really any time? Um, so specifically to the pandemic times. Yes. Uh, earlier, I was able to have 20 kids in my classes. Mm -hmm. Now we're only having not more than six kids in an hour. And everybody is sitting, you know, two feet apart and... Kids are also wearing masks, they sanitize, we check their temperatures, they sanitize the tables, the chairs, the computers, the lap, like everything. Everything. And, you know, and that's, that's persistence too, in my opinion, because that's what makes the parents and the kids feel safer when they come into your place. Yes. And when they go and talk to other people that, oh, I go to this place or I go to the studio and they're following all the protocols and I feel really safe in there that's a big thing because that's like telling me that I'm doing my social responsibility in a way by keeping everybody safe. And, you know, and the other thing is um, what is my motivation? If my desire to where I want to be is deep enough, is strong enough, mm. it'll automatically come to you. Yeah. So it's not I like, have a, to do can this. I do this? It's just like a, how can I? Cause I got to just figure this out. Exactly. And then the positive attitude, 
Because when the kids come in or when anybody comes in through our stores or studio or learning centers, we have to be happy. We have to be positive because that's the energy you're putting out to them. Because if you're grumpy and you're like, oh my God, my business sucks right now, which I don't want to put out the energy, but, but you know, what is it they're going to get out of it? They're like, oh, they pretty much don't know what they're doing. I don't want to be here. Why? Just put that, like you said, the big girl panties on, get that happy <laughs> face on, be positive. Just think everything is going to be okay and everything is okay. Yes. Yeah. That's what they'll feel. Yes. And actually, mm-hmm. while you said like, let's focus just specifically on the pandemic, you've also given a recipe for how to continue to have clients is to always be asking yourself, always, what are they needing? And at, what are they needing now? What are they needing now? So what are they needing now to feel safe? What are they needing now? More hours of their kid, not at home. <laughs> what are they needing now? <laughs> right? What are they needing now? They need, they need to see the policies in place. They need to see the hand sanitizer. They need to hear me tell them it's okay. They need to have options. They need, like, this should always be how we run our businesses is asking yourselves, what do my clients need now? And that has stopped me having full day. I used to have two day in a row, three day in a row, masterminds and programs and stuff, but in person. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know that I can teach three, four days in a row online but I'm not going to do that because what do my clients need right now? Not to be on friggin' Zoom for all the whole day, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they need things simplified. The way our brains are working right now is a little bit of a fog. And so we need to adapt. Well, ladies, you've like, there's so much to unpack here. Um, for our listeners, go check out Kalina Movement Studio and Level Up Kids in which cities for Level Up Kids, Simmer? Surrey and South Surrey for the physical locations, but we are, I would say, international now, especially my locations, because I have students from Australia, from New Zealand, from India. Yeah. 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 And she's doing a little <laughs> dance. And you can't see it. Uh, so check them out. The show notes have links to their websites. Go check them out. Give them a little love. Go on social media, like a few of their posts. You know, that's the the greatest gift that you can give a small business owner or a big business owner, but who does it for them, like for them and their family is to just give them some love and share with someone who you feel could benefit from their services. And as you heard, they're both online. So if you want to learn from these ladies or you want your kids to learn from these ladies, then sign them up right? Get them with the people who you can feel are passionate and really care. That's the people you want to hire to support you and your family. So ladies, we'll kind of bring this to a close. I'll also have to do a shout out because you're both in the Dynamic Women Confidence book, right? The Dynamic Women Confidence Secrets book that has uh, just launched. So I encourage uh, all of our listeners to pick up a copy so that you can read the secret about confidence from Karen and Simmer. They've got a lot to say, as you heard today. And so they have boiled it down to one main message that they want to share with you. And so make sure you pick up your copy. You can go to dianerolston.com um, forward slash confidence dash book to check that out. Okay. Well, thank you ladies for being here today. I really appreciate you being you know, candid about what you had to go through and giving some really great advice to those listening. So those listening, yeah, write it down what you learned and make sure that you apply it into your life. And until next time, everyone stay dynamic. Bye. Thank you dynamic women for joining us today. Please hop on over to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a review. Who do you know who needs to hear our message? We'd love it if you'd share our channel with your friends and family. If you're ready to be more dynamic, have more balance and more success, head over to www.dynamicwomenclub.com forward slash free gift for your key to success book. Stay dynamic.